Hello everyone, I'm Shail Mook. Today we'll talk about using aspect-oriented programming to debug a Spring Boot application. Before we begin, let's review what's aspect-oriented programming. It's a programming paradigm that aims to increase modularity by allowing the separation of cross-cutting concerns. In simple terms, it helps you keep your code clean, modular, and easy to maintain. AOP lets us write code that executes before or after a method. It includes the following common terms. An aspect represents the cross-cutting concerns or the functionality that needs to be applied throughout the application. A join point is a specific point in the execution flow of the application where an aspect can be applied. The action taken by an aspect at a specific join point is called a device. There are different types of a device, such as before, after, around, and after throwing. A point cut is a set of join points where an aspect should be applied. Let's explain this more visually. We have an execution. This is where our code is running methods, classes, and everything. Within this execution, we have join points. These are the areas which AOP can inject itself. Typically, it would be on method boundaries. An aspect is a specific binding which we can bind using a point cut, which links us to specific joint points. And that triggers the advice, which is the actual code that is executed at this point. I will skip the discussion on weaving since there is a lot of nuance related to that and I want to focus on the debugging aspects, not make this into an AOP tutorial. However, there is one general aspect of AOP I want to discuss. While AOP offers significant benefits in terms of modularity, maintainability, and debugging capabilities, it's important to be aware of the potential performance implications. Using AOP can intro introduce some overhead, primarily due to the creation and execution of proxy objects which intercept method calls and apply the specific, specified advices. The impact on performance can vary depending on the number of aspects, the complexity of point cut expressions, and the type of advice used. For example, a round advice is typically more expensive in terms of performance compared to before and after advice. To minimize the performance impact of AOP, consider the following best practices. Apply AOP to the critical parts of your application where it provides the most value. Avoid using aspects for trivial or infrequent operations. Ensure that your point cut expressions are as precise as possible. This can help minimize the number of unnecessary interceptions and reduce the overhead. Choose the appropriate type of advice for your use case. For example, use before or after advice instead of around advice when possible. If some aspects are only required for debugging or development purpose, use conditional aspects that can be enabled, disabled based on a configuration property. This ensures that the performance impact is limited to specific environments or scenarios. Regularly monitor and measure the performance of your application to ensure that the overhead introduced by AOP is within acceptable limits. Use profiling tools to identify potential bottlenecks and optimize your AOP implementation accordingly. Let's create a simple aspect to log the execution time of methods in our Spring Boot application. This can be helpful for identifying performance bottlenecks. We can create a new class called logging aspect and annotate it with aspect and component to indicate that it's an aspect and a spring managed beam. We implement a point cut expression to target the methods you want to measure. For example, you can target all public methods in a specific package. Point cut methods are 
empty because their sole purpose is to define a point cut expression, which determines the join points when where the aspect should be applied. The method body itself does not contain any logic as the behavior of the aspect is defined in the advice methods. In this case, in the method tagged with a round. The point cut method serves as a reusable reference to a specific point cut expression, making it easier to maintain and update if needed. By referring to a point cut method in your advice methods, you can apply the same point cut expression to multiple pieces of advice without duplicating the expression. We will see that in action when discussing before and after. We then implemented an, implement an around advice to measure the execution time and log the results. This code will execute every time the point cut is triggered. We can write generic code that measures the start time of the method. We invoke proceed, which performs the actual method, and then we can calculate the total elapsed time. In this case, we just print the elapsed time. After implementing the logging aspect, we can run our application and observe the logs. We should now see the execution time for each triggered method as a poor man's profiler. Just like a regular profiler, this tool has many disadvantages and impacts the observed application. However, we can extract valuable data if we tune this correctly. One of the common problems we face in big projects is flaky tests and failures. These are especially hard to understand as we might not have enough logging data. Adding logs to the entire application is impractical in most cases, and we'd only want such logs for specific CI executions. We wouldn't want to overlog in production or even maintain such logging code. However, knowing the parameters every method received and its return value can lead us to understand failure after the fact. This code shows such a logger that can print out every entry point and exit point. It includes the arguments and return values as well. The code itself is very similar to the one we had for timing method execution. Logging to keep track of performance or method entry is powerful but basic. We can do go much deeper than that. We can create an aspect to log incoming HTTP requests and responses. This aspect intercepts the methods with the at request mapping annotation, which are typically used for handling HTTP requests in Spring Boot applications. We can then log the request, its parameters, method, URI, etc. We can even print out the result and the result body if applicable. If we have a networking issue that's hard to pin down, we can enable this globally and follow the logs. If you don't care about response, we can use the at before annotation instead for faster execution. Another important aspect is being creation and destruction. We can create an aspect to log these events. This aspect intercepts the methods annotated with post construct and pre destroy, which isn't applicable to all beans, but would help us keep track of the applicable code in a large application. We can even log dependency injection events. This aspect in intercepts the methods with the auto wired annotation. Uh, it doesn't track constructor injection though, but we can use it to track the instance type that gets injected to a bean. AOP is a fantastic debugging tool. In this video, I skimmed a lot of big ideas and overused logging, 
when tracking performance, a better approach would be to accumulate values and then log the statistics in the end, thus removing the overhead of the logger, which impacts the results. The one thing I recommend is turning this off by default. It's important to run a CI cycle without AOP. The cost is too big and we can seriously impact the final result. We need to turn this on surgically when we need to understand something deep. In those situations, AOP tooling can make the difference when searching for that needle in the haystack. Thanks for watching. Please check out my book and follow me for more videos like this. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.